We say that AG Grid for React has a 100% React rendering engine. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what we mean by that. To explain, I'm going to start with this simple AG Grid community app where I've got some row data and some columns defined, a default column, and I'm loading some data from the server. And on the right here, I've got the application running. I'm going to customize this age column with my custom React component. So let me take one from my clipboard here that I wrote earlier. This video isn't meant to explain how to write cell renderers, so see other videos or a documentation to understand exactly what I'm doing here with the cell renderer. But in a nutshell, this cell renderer is going to display an image and then display the value for the cell. I'll now get the age column to use that component for its cell renderer. Now the component of my comp is being used for all of the cells inside the age column. I'm interested in what's happening behind the scenes. Let's maximize the browser and bring up the React developer tools. And we look at the components section. The topmost level app here is our sample app. If I select the chooser tool and go onto the first cell, I can see here my comp. That is the cell render that we configured that's been used for the age column. Over here, I can see all of the props that were passed down from the grid into my custom cell renderer. And then in the hierarchy, we can see that my comp sits inside a cell comp, which sits inside a row comp, which sits inside a row container, and so on and so on and so on until we get to the top level AG Grid React, which is the component that we included inside our sample application. How the grid works underneath the hood is the topic of a much more detailed, longer video. But what I want to do explain here is that the grid is rendered in React all the way from your app down through to where you customize the grid with your custom components. There's some rumors out there that AG Grid is not written in React, and uh, that's absolute bollocks. Time to go back to our sample codes. We'll close down the dev tools and bring the browser back to its normal size. I want to show you how to avoid wasted renders in your custom cell renderers. And to do that, let me introduce a different cell renderer here. This code just came from my clipboard. The component is still called my comp, so it's still configured onto the age column. The component keeps track of how many times it is rendered and prints that as part of the value. And I want this across all cells, so I'm going to take it out of the H column and put it into the default called F. Great, on the right hand side here, I can see that the number one is appearing before each cell's value. That means that each cell has been rendered exactly once. And here is the problem. If I start changing things inside the grid, such as moving the columns, I can see that the cells are getting re-rendered. For example, these cells here in the H column have now been rendered 33 times, even though the cell itself hasn't changed. It's only the position of the cell that has changed. The reason for this is that the grid is re-rendering, and those render cycles are falling through down to the custom cell renderer. And that is what we refer to as wasted renders in React. But it's okay, it's easily solved. What's needed is to put my comp inside a React memo like this. With memo set, if I move the columns around, the grid is re-rendering because the columns are moving positions. However, each individual cell is not changing. It still stays with its first initial render, therefore not wasting any React render cycles. And that brings us to the end of this video. We saw how to configure AG Grid React with a custom React component to control the contents of a cell. We then went to the React developer tools and we noticed that React was being used for all the rendering, including all the rendering of the grid and for the React component. Or to sum up in another way, AG Grid and React, they work really well. Mm -hmm.